Hi everyone, welcome to Pop Balls Workshop. In many of the different videos that I have done, I have shown you how to build a box. And in each of those videos, whether it was a drawer or cabinet or whatever type of box that it was, I used different techniques. Well, today is no different. I'm using this type of a gusset to be able to support the sides and the bottom of this box because this is a very thin five millimeter thick uh, wall on the box and it needs to be very lightweight. So this is the easiest way to be able to do it, to be able to provide the support. I have a leftover piece of the five millimeter plywood that I'm gonna be able to use for this project. The size of the box doesn't really matter. Now I'm actually making two different boxes. One of them is gonna go on top of a dresser to be able to hold some of the kids, uh, grandkids items. And the other box is gonna go for the laundry room to be able to hold some items there. So again, the size of the box doesn't really matter. It's the process that I want to be able to show you. And of course, the first step is I'm going to cut all of the lengths of the plywood to be able to get the proper height. And because there's two different boxes, obviously there's two different heights. So that's the first step. I'm cutting all the pieces for that. And now that I have all of the strips cut to the proper height, I need to be able to take these strips of wood and be able to cut them to the proper length. And to be able to do that, I'm just going ahead and setting up the table saw to the length that I need, and I'm going to cut all of those. And that will give me all of the sides that I need for my two boxes. If it wasn't for the fact that this plywood is so thin and lightweight, which is the requirement for these boxes, I would not need to be able to have a special joint to be able to make these because it's not just a simple matter of gluing these edges together because the box literally would fall apart. But I wanna be able to go ahead and get all of these cut to length, and then I'm gonna make the little gusset to be able to hold these boxes together and give enough gluing surface to be able to securely hold the box. Now granted, I could use other types of joints, whether it's a box joints or whatever, to be able to hold it, but I have not shown this method before. To be able to make these gussets, I'm starting out and cutting on a 45 degree angle the strips of the wood out of the uh, 1x4 that I have here. And that's going to be the first step in making these gussets. Now in some cases, just the 45 degree angle piece would be sufficient. But I want to be able to take it one step further and be able to put another edge on there to be able to receive the plywood into it to make it just a little bit nicer and not see that uh, plywood edge on the box. The nice thing about it, when I'm cutting this wood and I had the 45 strips uh, cut, it also means that I have on my one before that I have another 45 degree angle. So I can just literally tilt the blade back to the 90 degree position and cut this wood again. And it literally gives me two more strips of my 45 degrees. But once I've completed all of this and have all the strips that I need, it'll be time to head over to the uh, router table to be able to put the final profile onto these strips of wood. And you also notice I'm not using a tape measure. I don't have to be 100% accurate to be able to make these triangle shaped pieces. At the router table, I'm using a half inch straight bit to be able to put this profile on here. Now this is a small piece of wood that you're cutting, so if you feel uncomfortable using a router table in this manner, please skip this step and just use the triangle pieces. But if for my case, I'm using a push stick and I feel very comfortable being able to operate the router in this manner. But I know that this is not for everybody because these pieces are very small and you're working reasonably close to the bit. Now, once I cut it on one side, I just flip this over and I'm gonna run it right back through the router table again to be able to put the same profile on the other side of this strip of wood. And I'll repeat this process until I have enough of these strips to be able to handle all of the vertical uh, portions of this box. Now, this is the only thing that I have to do on the router table. Once this process is done, I'll be back over on the table saw and I'll just cut these to the length that I need. But here you can see the actual profile that I cut and that is going to be able to receive the plywood on each side and form that 90 degree angle. So here we are back at the table saw now and it's time to be able to cut each of these strips to the proper length. And this is according to the height of the box. 
So one box is going to be like 7 inches tall, and the other box is going to be 11 inches tall. So I'm going to need four strips at the 7 inches, and I'll need four strips at the 11 inches, and that'll take care of the sides of the box. It's time now to be able to go ahead and glue on these sides pieces onto the plywood. Now I'm going to use a combination on this first box of the white glue and the Starbond CA glue. So I'm going to put the uh, white glue on one side and then on the strip of the uh, that I had just cut I'm going to put the Starbond glue on it. Now what this will do is allow this to be able to hold very quickly and keep the box together without any clamping required. Now I'm going to put these strips on each end of the box and then I'll attach the other portions on here. But this gives an instant bond and I don't have to worry about clamps and I don't have to wait for the drying time. Now that little notch as you see there, I cut that with the table saw and that is going to be able to receive the bottom of this box and that will be able to hold it in place and then I'll put another triangle piece of the gusset material in that bottom to be able to hold it. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and add the white glue and the Starbond CA glue to be able to hold this in position and put this box together. I want to remind everybody also that I have a uh, discount code in the description below so you can be able to receive a substantial discount on the Starbond CA glue. I hope that you will take the opportunity to take advantage of that. It is a good savings for a glue that I think is a necessity in the shop. Once I have the two pieces on like this on each of the ends of the box, it will be time to grab the sides of the box and be able to put those in place. And because the gusset's there and the mating surface is there, it goes together very, very easily to be able to hold this box together. What I really love about this method is that there's no clamping required, there's no nails. All you do is just use a little bit of the glue and you're able to put this box together and using the CA glue, it's instant. You can be able to complete this box and be ready to be able to put it into surface. Okay, three sides are attached. It's time to get this fourth side. Now, I always do like to dry fit, make sure that it's going to fit properly. Once I do that, then I'm going to go ahead and take the Starbond uh, CA glue and be able to apply that to this surface. And again, this is going to dry instantly. Now in this case, I'm not going to use any of the white glue. I'm just going to use the Starbond glue and to be able to attach this end piece. And of course, I use the accelerator, spraying that directly onto the plywood, and then just fit this right back into position where it belongs. Now the only thing that you need to do is just hold it in place for a few seconds, and I'm just double checking to make sure that everything was secured properly. And then after holding it in position for several seconds, the bond is complete and this portion of the box will be done. Now I have the four sides all glued together, but nothing square. It's time to be able to take the measurements and cut the bottom of the box. This is what will actually square the box up and be able to hold everything together and actually create the box. At the table saw, after taking the proper measurements, I just went ahead and cut the bottom to the correct size so that it'll fit into the bottom of my box. Now I'm taking the mitre gauge and I'm using that to support the plywood to be able to cut the proper length. And again, I just took the measurements of my box on the length and the width, and that's how I'm cutting this. The final step to have this bottom ready to go in is I need to cut these square corners off. They need to be cut at the 45 degree angle, just enough to be able to have it drop into position and to be received by those little gusset uh, corners on the box itself. Now I've marked the table saw itself to be able to have the exact location that I need to put this um, material down to be able to cut these corners off. That way I can do the re repeated cuts easily without having to remeasure and all of them will be exactly the same. So the bottom is actually installed now and you can see the corners and how it matches absolutely perfectly. I love that. So the next thing is to go ahead and be able to glue this in and I'll put some little triangle pieces of gusset strips inside the box to be able to add additional gluing surface. Now this is some triangle pieces that are, do not have that additional profile on it from the router. And all I need to be able to do is cut these at the 45 degree angle and they drop into position perfectly. And that will add a lot of strength. Now here I'm using the CA glue to be able to put this in 
there's really not necessary to be able to use any of the white glue on this. I want this to be able to drop into position and glue instantly. And that will hold the bottom to the sides and it'll complete the process. So even though this is a different style box to be able to build and show today in this example, I still want to be able to keep it as simple as possible. That principle is always the underlying principle in my shop to be able to keep things simple as possible. And this is no different. These little triangle pieces with just the CA glue will hold just fine and it will give the support to the sides that it needs. Now the ends are a little bit different because on this side piece that I just installed, all that was required was a 45 degree cut. Well, now that those pieces are in, there's actually two angles. I still need the 45 degree cut, but I'm also gonna need a second 45 degree angle to be able to accommodate that other space. Now I made this little test cut to be able to show you how that was done on the two 45s. Now this is the first 45 degree, and you can see how it fits perfectly at the top. But by doing that second 45 degree, it allows it to be able to conform to that other measurement. So the first step, I need to be able to get the proper length. And I'll cut this at the table saw. And that'll simply be the 45 degree angle. I have the first 45 degree cut. And I need to go ahead and cut the second one. So I'm going to take the mita gauge and set it to the 45 degree angle and make that second cut based on the mark that I did at the cabinet itself. Now, just as a reminder, these first two cuts were just exactly the same as what I had done for that long piece. It's just simply a 45 degree angle on each end. And with that cut made, I am going to dry fit it just to make sure that it's the correct length. And you can see by the picture here, it's perfect. So that's what I need. Now it's time to be able to go ahead and make that second 45 degree cut. And the simplest, easiest way to do that is at the bandsaw. I'll tilt the table over at that 45 degree angle, and then I can just simply, with a square cut, with that mita gauge, cut that 45 degree angle. And that allows it to be a perfect fit. Now I do this on each of the ends, and then let's go try it out and see how it fits in the box. But here's a close-up of the two cuts that I made. Again, they're just simply 45 degrees. And you can see that drops in and gives a perfect spit. That's what I want. So now just go ahead and glue this in, and we'll do the same thing, make a second one for the other end. Now again, to be able to put this little gusset in, I'm using strictly the Starbond CA glue. I'm putting it onto the gusset, spraying the plywood, and then just literally drop it in position and just hold it for a few seconds while that glue bonds and dries. Now this joint looks complicated, but I hope that you can see that it's a very, very easy joint to be able to do. And it holds extremely well with the CA glue. I want to give you one more close-up look at this joint. It looks very complicated when you look at that corner, but actually, now that you know, it's literally just simply two 45 degree cuts, one on the table saw and one on the band saw. Very easy, very safe cuts to be able to make. And now we've got a completed box. The only thing that's left is a little bit of sanding, and I'm gonna go ahead and paint this box and get it up for the grandkids to be able to use. Now here's a look at the completed box. The grandkids love it because everything is all nice and neat in this one box. The other thing is Mama and Papa like it too because it keeps all the clutter off of the top of this dresser. I hope you enjoyed this video today and seen yet one more way to build a build a box. And if you liked the video, by all means, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And while you're there, subscribe and hit the bell notification. I look forward to seeing each and every one of you in the next video that I do, whatever that may be. Bye-bye now. Oh, by the way, I think I'm going to put a lasered image on the box. What do you think? Let me know.